Hey guys, it's Nicole. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I like to post about books and music, mostly Taylor Swift. I'm finally over whatever weird sickness I had. For the most part, my voice is still a little bit weird, but like the cough is gone. Thank God I can sleep now. I am feeling much more myself. Today, I'm going to be doing a different type of video. I created a polyvore slash year style set for every song on Evermore by Taylor Swift. If you don't know what polyvore was, I I have a video all about what happened to it, what it was, just covering the basics of the website. Your Style is basically the Polyvore alternative that sprouted up, which is pretty much a social media website where you can make these collages called sets. They're kind of like a cross between mood boards as well as outfits that follow whatever theme you want them to follow. A lot of pictures are plucked straight from Pinterest or We Heart It. So I really wanted to make a set for each song on the Evermore album because the album in general feels very visual and diverse to me. I see certain colors and images with each song, not quite like synesthesia, but just like really getting a mood for each song. I felt this a little bit less with folklore because there was a lot of like black and white cohesion to folklore. I also kind of feel this with Lover. I think I am going to be making a video where I do a set for each song on Lover. Let me know if you guys want that. But yeah, today I'm just going to be showing you every single set for every single song on Evermore and kind of explaining why I designed them the way that I did. I'm excited to be doing this. I really like visual type of arts, but usually we don't focus on that as much on my channel because it's all about the words of books and the words of T.S. herself or like just music and arrangements in general. Okay, so first we have my set for Willow, which is the first song on Evermore. So I'm definitely getting very autumn vibes from the entirety of Evermore, but each song is kind of like a different subgenre of autumn, if that makes sense. So for Willow, I had to choose something witchy for the outfit. So I have this Renaissance dress paired with a cape that is directly inspired from the one she wears in the music video. I also have these shoes. I'm not sure exactly what you would call them. Running through the woods and casting spell type shoes appropriate for those kinds of activities. Of course, I have the Willow lyrics over here in the left corner. And I very much just took inspiration from the imagery. I have a Willow over here in the background, a ship wheel. She sings about wine. So I have a picture of a book with wine spilled on it. That's kind of blasphemy now that I think about it. There's a train, of course. You know that my train could take you home. Head on the pillow, I could feel you sneaking in. I had to have this black and white photo of someone sleeping on a pillow. And then of course the work of art. I love the idea of having someone standing in a museum. One of the little filler objects is also a collection of stars because this song kind of directly ties into Cardigan, which has the line, you drew stars around my scars. And yeah, I really like this one. Okay, so next is champagne problems. So something about this one, I mean, I guess it's just the mention of evergreens. It feels very gold and green to me. Midas touch on a Chevy door, everything he touches turns to gold, but that ends up not being enough to save the relationship. I think green and gold are just such symbolic colors. Evergreen, something that continues to come back, but of course this never will. And gold is more of a color that's like frozen in time. It's something precious, but how useful is something made of gold really? You book the night train for a reason, so we have another train. Champagne pain glasses over here. I also have, oh my god, I love this pin so much. It's a broken heart, but also it's half of a bottle of champagne, which I think is so amazing. I have this little engagement ring over here in this corner that is an opal stone. I had to include a picture of a tapestry. The tapestry also feels very college-esque to me because everybody likes to decorate their dorm rooms with a tapestry behind their bed. We have a door that I believe is part of a Chevy, but you know, I did my best to stick to those visuals. A pair of golden hands holding a golden heart. We have an evergreen tree and someone touching it. A cup of coffee and a book for that academic aesthetic. Autumn leaves. And of course the lyrics. In the top left corner she would have made such a lovely bride. I love these shoes and that dress so much. I think they're so cute. Okay next we have Gold Rush. So I took a probably unconventional slash controversial approach as far as the outfit goes for Gold Rush because to me I wanted to do an outfit that the narrator of the song would be wearing which to me is something very basic and casual because she's talking about this person who she admires who is just absolutely golden to them. So she feels like she pales in comparison. So of course I have an Eagles t-shirt. <laughs> There's debate whether it's the Eagles, the band, or the Eagles, like the Philadelphia football team. I feel like it's the football team because Taylor is from Pennsylvania. I also have some beat up Converse. I just felt like those were fitting and some plain denim jeans. Again, we have more ship references. So I have 
had to add this gorgeous pirate looking ship with a golden backdrop during golden hour. It's perfect. I think because the lyric video influenced how I view it. This song feels like silk sheets, I guess. So I have a picture of what looks like a silk sheet. I have a wooden floor and then these lace curtains with light peeking through. Dominoes, of course, more golden water. And of course we cannot forget the fading into the gray of my day old tea. That continuous internal rhyme alliteration that's happening. I wanted to nod to that through this image. And then the lyrics, what must it be like to grow up that beautiful? There's also a necklace that is a ship wheel, a couple of fillers that include an anchor ship wheel compass, I believe it is either a compass or a clock. Yeah, lots of pink and gold. But when you were talking about the narrator herself, it's a much more plain look and she's just surrounded by this gold in reference to who the song is about. So next is Tis the Damn Season. Okay, so I pulled a lot of imagery from this one. Of course, this is way more winter than a lot of the other songs on Evermore. Blue, I feel, is the unsung color of Christmas and the holidays. I didn't want to use red or green because that is way too obnoxious and this narrator thinks the holidays linger like bad perfume, so I didn't want to be too obvious about the holiday season. We have a very cozy look, kind of like the outfit you would have before you leave the warmest bed you've ever known. The sweater says Malibu because this character is from LA and she's going back to her hometown for the holidays. We have a lot of wintry scenes. The road less taken looks real good now. And then I put above that an actual road going through a wintry forest. We have another evergreen someone's cutting down for a Christmas tree. And then of course the song sings about hometowns. So I have a home sweet home, wintry aesthetic picture of a welcome mat. We have the inside of a church. I think it's the inside, but there's a bunch of snow on the inside because she talks about the Methodist church. She talks about friends who will write books about her. I felt like I really wanted to add some books in there. I love those boots so much. Ugh, I love seeing a visual embodiment of these songs. I included a globe because this character really wanted to get out of her hometown and see the world. And the necklace I don't think has really any significance. It just says baby girl and I just liked it. Okay, next is Tolerate It. This one also is a little more wintry to me than autumn -y. A lot of visuals here. I really like the blue and orange for this because it's like halfway between autumn, halfway between winter. Blue is a wintry color and orange is a little more fall time. I really like this upper left hand corner because it's like the polished plates until they gleam and glisten but then this high heeled foot on the plate it just has this dominance that I feel like this character needs to embody. <coughs> Took this dagger in me and removed it. I have a dagger of course. A really cool looking door because she waits by the door like she's just a kid. I sit and watch you reading. There's another book here. I made you my temple, my mural, my sky. I love this kind of golden hour but still a blue sky painting which also references the use my best colors for your portrait line. I really wanted something that was painted. I really like these shoes because it makes me think of Cinderella. This just feels like such an ingenue type outfit, like a frilly girly blue dress that's still pretty simple. I have a stack of blankets on top of a trunk that he used to throw over her barbed wires but it does not anymore because he's trash. And yeah, I really like these blue and goldeny colors. Okay, next we have No Body No Crime. I had so much fun with this one but for this one I definitely didn't want to have a dress. I wanted someone who was about to go investigate a murder and was dressing appropriately. So I have a leather jacket. It adds that edginess to it. This character is gutsy. She seeks vengeance for her friend. Some very practical denim. A scarf to keep warm because this is the winter time. And I really like these bold golden boots. And then we have a little Chanel bracelet that I just really liked. I love the gold, navy, and maroon combination I have going on here. Of course, we have a picture of Olive Garden breadsticks. There's a picture of Taylor with all of the Haim sisters. Or is it Haim? A glass of wine. We meet up every Tuesday night for dinner and a glass of wine. There's a boat. This is kind of what I'm imagining the house looks like from the song when I pass his house his truck has got some brand new tires of course it's not a truck in the driveway I could only find something that was so accurate to this image I was getting in my head I just really feel like I could see the narrator wearing this outfit okay next is happiness absolutely heartbreaking I wanted to include some Gatsby references in this for sure we have Gatsby and the green light I have the direct quote from Gatsby I hope she'll be a fool that's the best thing a girl can be in this world a beautiful little fool honey when I'm above the trees I see this for what it is I have a bunch of evergreens but a more aerial view like a bird's eye view so this definitely was the dress she wore at midnight that i was trying to go for as far as the outfit i love this golden jacket and then this like stunning navy silky dress underneath and then i love those shoes so much this like golden leaf type of look when a dollar less and start to look like weapons i really wanted to include that dagger picture again i was dancing when the music stopped somebody moving the little what is it called turntable thing off the record i have these clouds because she's she sings about heavens 
seven years in heaven. My eyes leak acid rain on the pillow where you used to lay your head. I have this white pillow. A glorious sunrise, which is happening in this wintry forest. And also someone peeking out of a window as the sun rises. I really like that note of hope that it ends on. And I think this eerie picture in the bottom left, I think that might've been a reference to terror in the nightfall. That to me is like a really physical embodiment and haunted by the look in my eyes. There is some eeriness to this song and I wanted to include that. Okay, next is Dorothea. This might be controversial because I feel like people have very specific ideas in their head. This is just mine. So I feel like I'm opposite in the sense that Gold Rush to me, the narrator is very simple and plain. But for Dorothea, Dorothea herself to me is very glamorous. She's someone who moved out of her hometown because she had these huge dreams. I could definitely see her in this really rich red fur coat as well as this dress that is just covered in gold stars. But it's not like tacky. It's not over the top and some simple black heels. There's kind of like a retro-ness to her, I think. Yeah, I think this outfit really represents what I picture when I think of something Dorothea would wear. I love this filler of a, is it a clapperboard? Like when you start filming a movie that is just above the dress. I have an overhead view of Manhattan, I think it is. I understand that she went to LA because that's what she says she did in Tis the Damn Season, but something about her like screams New York to me. I think this is a picture of Central Park in autumn, if I'm remembering correctly. Of course, her dress has a star pattern because the stars in her eyes shined brighter in Tupulo. Red lipstick seems like a given, selling makeup and magazines. Stars in her eyes. I really had to use this picture. I love it so much. There's a cafe over here that's called the Tupulo Honey Cafe, I think. Tupulo, Tupulo something cafe. I used some crown fillers because she's a queen selling dreams. I really wanted to include this black and white photo of these round retro glasses. And these Christmas lights are a reference to Tis the Damn Season. Oh, also, I just really liked this blue and silver necklace. It felt like something she would wear to like a movie premiere she's a part of or something. Okay, next we have Coney Island. I know this is a really depressing song. I love being sad, but something also feels really pastel to me like Coney Island, cotton candy type of vibes, this blue fur coat, some cozy tights, and this little pink cotton candy colored dress, cotton candy earrings. I thought they were so cute. I couldn't not use them. The mischief, the gift wrapped suburban dreams. I had to include these little presents that are wrapped. Sorry for not making you my centerfold. I included a bunch of Vogue issues. It gets colder and colder when the sun goes down. That's where this image comes from. I also had to put the arcade ring in this. Were you waiting at our old spot in the tree line by the gold clock? This clock image to me is so appropriate. There's a birthday cake standing in the hallway with a big cake. We have a merry-go-round carousel. And this is Coney Island in the winter time in the bottom right corner. Did I shatter you? I really wanted like broken glass. This also kind of looks like ice, which is really fitting. The fast times, the bright lights, the merry-go. So this is like a reminiscent image of what was less than what is now happening, which is this sadness that these characters feel. So this is just kind of the nostalgia that is in their minds, I think. But also a little bit of that wintertime sadness is incorporated, of course. I love these colors, these like sunset blues and pinks. Did I paint your bluest skies the darkest gray? I love this image of the silhouette that looks like she's painting the clouds into the sky. Yeah, I love how this one turned out. Next is Ivy. I was so excited to do this one. I'm obsessed with this. Okay, so this dress, look at that dress. Okay, how much I would give to see Taylor wear this to some event or some red carpet. I love how it's like a bunch of flowers inside the tool. I think that's so cute and interesting. I also have some butterfly sandals that feel like they're from the lover era. She did wear heels with butterflies on the backs of them during 2019, I think. God, I love this imagery. It's kind of springtime, but kind of winter at the same time based on all of the references. Clovers bloom in the fields. We have that. We have drinking my husband's wine above that. House of stone, your ivy grows. So I have this stone house and ivy growing up the side of it. My pain fits in the palm of your freezing hand. There's so many visuals, you guys. I was having so much fun with this. Your opal eyes. I included this picture of opals. Crescent moon. The incandescent glow. I had to use this lantern. It kind of makes me think of the scene in the love story music video where they're meeting up. I'd meet you where the spirit meets the bone. There's obviously references to graveyards there and a lot of fire going on. A goddamn blaze in the dark. We have another book being destroyed. Oh my god. A lot of leaves that I'm using as fillers. Another crescent moon showing up as a filler. This hand that's on fire. How did I miss that? Yeah, this is one of my favorite ones, I think. Next we have Cowboy Like Me. I again went to more western route. Kind of similar to No Body No Crime, but this is way more western. Okay, so I have a cowboy hat, of course. We have a cactus plant. Lots of horseshoes showing up. These rings, one of them is a lock and key, and the other says howdy. I love these bell bottoms so much. 
much. I want them so bad. This embroidered design is so cute. I love them with this long sleeve westerny shirt with the collar, some more gorgeous embroidery, some brown classic cowboy boots because the rest of the outfit is like kind of loud. Boots beneath my bed. I love this image for that because like she's on the bed with these boots on. Now I'm waiting by the phone, this pearly looking phone. This song makes me think of like the Wild West. Airport bar, tennis court with a wine glass on top of this racket. I thought that was just such a cool picture. This song makes me think of Rose and Jack from the Titanic telling all the rich folks anything they want to hear. Rose is kind of, she wants to marry Cal because her and her mother are like, did her dad die or something? They're losing all their money. Her mom was like, you don't want to see all our nice things be sold at auction. There's a little bit of finesse in the both of these characters, so I had to include Jack and Rose. You could be the way forward and I know I'll pay for it. That's definitely Rose because of what happens to him, obviously. The Gardens of Babylon, I think this is like the only picture I could find of what that could look like. Fancy car. Person is also wearing a tennis skirt. It mentions tennis. Also, this had to have long sleeves because she has some tricks up her sleeve. Cowboy skeleton with a gun and he has been pierced by arrows. He's like a bandit, cowboy, outlaw, eyes full of stars, kind of similar to the stars in your eyes shine brighter in Tupulo. Yeah, so next is long story short. Okay, so this one feels kind of yellowish to me. I love this sunny dress. It's very optimistic, cute high-heeled Oxfords. This is very classic 2014-2015 Taylor. I think this cardigan is just so cozy and cute to go over it. I think that's a golden key necklace. Golden gates they once held the keys to. So there's like references to Alice in Wonderland, fell down a rabbit hole. I have a rabbit hole over here. The alley that she mentions. This makes me think of like Call It What You Want Part 2. The knife cuts both ways. I brought a knife to a gunfight. So I have this hand holding a knife and roses with it. Shooting star. Rare is the glimmer of a comet in the sky. Climbed right back up the cliff. Golden gates. I dropped my sword. So not only a knife, but a sword. Clung to the nearest lips. I have stars on lips this time. My waves meet your shore ever and ever more. I always felt I must look better in the rear view, so I have a rear view mirror here. She talks about the comet, so I have this. Is this some kind of piece of jewelry? I think they're like brooches or something, just this like bunch of brooches that are space themed. Okay, next is Marjorie. Absolutely heartbreaking. Wasn't looking forward to making this one. However, I did want to have a retro vibe. I wanted to be something Marjorie would wear. So we have this gorgeous dress. It also looks like something Taylor would have worn during the red era. These black vintage shoes, a pearl necklace, of course, black black cat eye glasses, these golden brooches that felt very retro. We have Taylor's signature included in this because watched as you signed your name Marjorie. We have a picture of Marjorie in the top left corner. This is such a gorgeous picture. The receipt I felt was very clever. Grocery store receipts. I included a receipt of all of the tracks on Evermore. All your closets of backlog dreams. Taylor has talked about this song and how her grandmother had so many dresses and she wishes she would have asked her where she wore every single one to. So I have a visual representation of that. Down the stairs when they would go swimming. So I have these stairs that lead down to this beach. You love the amber skies so much. Amber skies down at the bottom. Long limbs and frozen swims above that. I'd complain the whole way there, the car ride back and up the stairs. We have this convertible car over to the left. And I think this golden window reflection. The autumn chill that wakes her up. You're alive in my head. So I have this brain that's made out of these flowers because the memory of Marjorie, I feel like looks like that probably in her head. Okay, next. Next is closure. So we have this navy lacy dress, but also velvet and those same shoes I used earlier, the gold leaf. Tears in my beers and my candles. I have this like crying photo that's like a golden tear. Beers reaching out across the sea that you put between you and me. So I have some ocean pictures, but also somebody holding a beer bottle out of the ocean. We have candles, candles coming out of beer bottles, candles, more candles to the left. Yes, I got your letter. So I have a handwritten calligraphy letter at the top, more like butterbeer type beer this time over to the middle. The shape of your name still spells out pain, so I included her signature again. It cut deep to know you right to the bone. I have this rib cage with flowers inside of it. I'm just a wrinkle in your new life. That's where I got this blue velvet image, and I used that same ship wheel golden necklace. I think it looks really good against the navy dress. Next is Evermore. I love this one so much. Oh my god, it's so cozy. Evermore is such a cozy song to me. So she mentions December and November. I couldn't find something 
fitting that was July that wouldn't be like really summery so I just skipped that one. A lot of images with this one. I rewind the tape but all it does is pause. We have that towards the bottom. Staring out at open window catching my death. And when I was shipwrecked, writing letters addressed to the fire. So we have a letter that is being burned in a fire. Bare feet running through the snow. Barefoot in the wildest winter. An unmoored boat at the top. The frost on these leaves over here underneath the boots. And yeah, lots of wintry images. But also water. A cabin right above the this pain wouldn't be forever more lyrics. And as far as the outfit, I just wanted something really cozy. She talks about being shipwrecked. Lots of sea water metaphors again. So we have an anchor necklace, a cozy little brown cardigan, plaid dress, some simple brown boots. This one is so wintry. I included these little Christmas tree shaped sugar cookies, a little snowflake towards the top, wildest winter. I have that text in there. I love that alliteration. Okay, next is right where you left me. This one feels kind of vintagey and also red for some reason. It kind of feels like a song that belongs on red. Like she talks about being 23, which was during the red era. I have some balloons that say 23. I love this outfit. I'm picturing kind of like a pinup hairstyle. Dust collected on my pinned up hair. So I have kind of a pinup hairstyle in the bottom right corner. A retro dress, a black fur coat, and these gorgeous retro T-strap heels. This golden ring with a pearl. I included the red matches from the Taylor's version red drop. Pinned up hair. These would be the pins that she's using. Friends get married. I have this girl in a wedding dress over here. Matches burn after the other. Pages turn and stick to each other. So I have a book over here. So I have this little diner. It feels like it's taking place in a diner to me. I don't know where I got that. Like in It's Time to Go, the restaurant that she mentioned in the first verse is like more of an upscale restaurant. But in this song, to me, it's a diner and during the holidays. So this diner has like Christmas decorations in it. I feel like this is very appropriate for this song to me. I'm sure you've got a wife out there, kids and Christmas. I do have some Christmas lights over in the middle as well. Strangers get buried. That's why I have the cemetery imagery. Glass shattered on the white cloth. I really like this shattered doll image. Did you hear about the girl who got frozen? I have literally a frozen girl over here on the right. Very literal. I'm taking these images. Glass shattered. Again, I have the same glass that I used for Coney Island, I think it is. And also if our love died young, I can't bear witness. That also the cemetery. I feel like it's appropriate. And the last one, it's time to go. I don't really know why I chose this outfit. Let me try to remember. I just feel like it's very independent, sticking up for what you believe you deserve. I love this dress. I love these boots. It kind of feels a little bit 70s to me. A really cool coat that is blue on the outside but has a leopard print pattern on the inside. I think that's so cool. He sits on his throne in his palace of bones. So I have this throne. When the dinner is cold, I have this whole spread of wine and different food. Sometimes to run is the brave thing. I have these girls running. So I felt like I should include like the twin from your dreams line, but using cat twins. So I feel like Taylor would approve. We have a broken heart. Well, not broken, but like a literal heart with a bunch of roses through it. Another broken heart as a filler. He's got my past frozen behind glass. This frozen image at the top. More winter time vibes, etc. Blue and red and gold. So yeah, that is all of the sets. Please let me know down below what you thought of this video. If you want me to do this for more of Taylor's albums, and also which one was your favorite. I'd also like to know just kind of what colors you see for each song if you do and what kind of outfits you would see these characters wearing. I've seen kind of similar things on TikTok where people wear a different outfit for each song from Folklore Evermore or like the characters from the Teenage Love Triangle or whatever. Yeah, I really appreciate how visual Taylor's lyrics are and how you can create your own art inspired by the stuff that she writes because she's just so descriptive. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to follow me on my Instagram, it is right here. And if you want to follow me on my TikTok, that is right here. I will see you all next week for another video and I hope you have an amazing day. Bye guys.